This video will be discussing the DHCP log from the Bro, Zeek, or Corelight log set. I'm going to briefly describe each field, sometimes provide a screenshot, and small examples if applicable. I'm going to skip over timestamps and start with the UIDs. UIDs are recognizable if you've ever used Bro, or Zeek, or Corelight before. The reason that there are so many UIDs with DHCP, however, is that anytime you have a client and a server pair renewing or acting a DHCP lease, it'll show up with the same ID. So if a machine's connected for a very, very, very long time, it's quite conceivable that you'll have thousands of counts as shown here. Client and server addresses. You'll see these in leases if you request a renewal for an expiring lease, or if a lease is up for its, its half-life, most clients will renew at that point. This will show up as the IP address of the machine if you have an IP address. If this is your very first request, as is shown in this screenshot, and you don't have an IP address, you'll show up as quad zeros. Server address is what one would expect. It's just a DHCP server that, res that responds to the broadcast. And as shown here, this machine was given a DHCP lease for 192.680.10, and it did not have one before. Thus, the quad zero where it says client IP address. Being as GHCP is all layer 2 based and this is all broadcast based, knowing the max is extremely vital, so it is one of the default extracted fields. To address hostname, the FQDN, and domain simultaneously, I'm going to address these because they're all options. GHCP options are simply fields of data or configuration or information needed by a client or provided by a server. So the screenshot here on the right on Wire in Wireshark changed from a Windows workstation to a Cisco phone just to show that a Cisco phone will ask for certain parameters and it's, these will be different from a desktop or a thin client. DSP can be used for everything from bootstrapping to simply providing IP addresses. So there's a number of options you can use. Requested address. Most people are not aware of this, but you can use DHCP to actually request a specific IP should you want it. You can think of this as wanting your favorite parking spot. If it does not have that address available, it'll give you a different address, but it is quite possible to ask for one should you want it. Assigned address is exactly what one would imagine. This is simply the address the DHCP server responds with. Likewise, the lease time is just how long this lease is valid for. If you're not familiar with DHCP, the concept of leases is simply a timer for the lifespan of that response so that one machine doesn't hold an IP in perpetuity. You'll see labs and visitor networks have very, very, very short lease times, whereas you'll have enterprise and home networks with much higher lease times. A client message for DHCP decline. You'll see these in the event that a DHCP server provides an IP address and a client ARPS to detect if anyone else has that address to avoid an IP conflict. And if something, if another client or device does respond back saying, yes, this is my address, the client will then use a DHCP de decline to tell the DHCP server to start the DHCP process over again and attempt to find another IP. Likewise, a DHCP NAC can be used from server to client in order to say some part of this is not valid. It's in theory possible to do this with an invalid option, but generally you'll see this in the event that you have a rogue or accidentally broadcasting DHCP server, and one DHCP server will start to serve the request, the client will respond, the second DHCP server will see part of it and have no idea what's occurring and send a NAC back. Generally speaking, if you have a lot of DHCP NACs on your network, it's reason for concern. Message types you'll see in every DHCP request and response that I'm aware of. Generally speaking, it'll be just as shown here with a Splunk screenshot, acts and forms, requests. It's just part of the process of asking for an IP address and maintaining the lease if that machine is still active. Durations are literally what it sounds like. It's the duration from which a client requests a DHCP renewal, lease, or anything else to the point that the server responds. This, as expected, should occur extremely quickly, and as shown from the screenshot here in Splunk, you should never expect to see the first digit be anything but a zero. Message origin will not be used that often. In the event that you have a lot of DHCP messages going back and forth between the server, especially if there's multiple clients or multiple servers, then having this can be useful, but it's rarely used. Client and server software is seemingly very rarely used in my experience. 
However, it's a way of using DHCP to report on a vendor. And the reason that you would want to do this would be, an example would be taking all Dell computers and giving them a set of options. You can kind of think of this as a template per vendor. So you can use vendor somewhat ambiguously as opposed to saying Dell or Compaq or something like that. You could say vendor A, B, or C and get certain options back in return. But again, this is very rarely used. Circuit ID, agent remote ID, and subscriber ID. I'm going to very quickly cover these simply because they're essentially almost never used. These date back to the 80s when circuit IDs, i.e. frame relay, ATM, things of that nature, were still using these. But I don't believe these are actually used in a modern network. 